This chapter is on currency crisis and what countries can do against them. The initial situation with which we are supposed to start is that for some reason international investors such as pension funds or central banks that hold a certain currency or sovereign wealth funds or other types of investors start to expect a devaluation of a currency. So that means that the nominal exchange rate at time t plus 1 that it is, is expected at time t would be less than e bar, a fixed exchange rate, for example. The reason is they may simply perceive the currency as overvalued for uh, fundamental economic reasons or uh, for whatever reasons. Or it could be that, as we've seen in the previous um, chapter, that the home country may have been subject to an asymmetric uh, shock. So, for example, a recession that only hits uh, the home economy, but um, not the foreign economy, or there is a boom abroad. That This was the example earlier with uh, the German boom after its reunification within the European monetary system. Or the expectations may simply be without any particular reasons, but they could turn out to be self-fulfilling in the end if just enough people really expect the depreciation. In all these cases, irrespective of the initial reason, there would be a pressure to devalue the currency. Why? Because uh, capital would flow out of uh, the country, because people expect the devaluation in the future, and uh, this would put downward pressure on the exchange rate, of course, because the demand for this particular currency decreases. Which strategies do countries typically have available to deal with uh, such a situation? The first thing that is typically done is uh, to try to manage expectations by convincing the markets that the bag or um, the high level of the uh, exchange rate is indeed uh, stable. So then there are typically statements that are made such as we uh, will definitely defend the bank, we will do it whatever it takes, the central bank has enough resources to do that and so on and so forth. So these are typically public statements that try to be convincing in order to calm down the markets and to um, yeah, change the expectations already uh, initially such that, it, uh, that this pressure to devalue does not uh, come up in the first place. If this does not help, then typically uh, home countries or the central banks uh, start to buy uh, the home currency with reserves that they have in foreign currencies. So actually what they do is they start to run down their reserves. Sometimes this helps to stabilize the currency, sometimes only in the, in the short run, but definitely it's an expensive uh, strategy. So if you buy home currency, um, with foreign currency and then afterwards the exchange rate devalues, then of course you make uh, huge uh, losses. You've given away highly valued stable currencies for a depreciating uh, home currency. If this strategy does not help, then very soon uh, reserves will become smaller and smaller and at some point the central bank cannot pursue this strategy anymore. In this case, what is often done is to raise the interest rate uh, at home, at least in case if uh, monetary policy, uh, sovereign monetary policy is uh, possible. However, such a strategy is risky because it could generate or uh, a recession or deepen an existing recession. So uh, it may have adverse uh, economic uh, consequences. Sometimes this helps to um, stop the outflow because investors expect higher interest rates uh, so that uh, this compensates them for certain um, expected devaluations. So they may be um, inclined to uh, keep invested in the currency, uh, but sometimes it does not help. So what's the next strategy that is um, often done? That's to introduce capital controls to allow only limited um, uh, withdrawals uh, from uh, the uh, accounts of, of, of people that's often made or to make it difficult for uh, firms to um, send money abroad or for private people to send money abroad. And if this is uh, very strict, then it can also uh, slow down the outflow of capital and help to stabilize the currency. However, often it does not work. And then the last option that is available is just to devalue the currency after all. So often these policies are tried subsequently in a crisis and uh, very often um, you end up in the end, nevertheless, to have to devalue the currency.
So one example of this, I've already mentioned it before, is the crisis of the European monetary system uh, from 1992 to 1993 where due to the German reunification, the beginning 1990s, uh, the economy in Germany starts to overheat. So there is a lot of demand in the economy because Eastern Germans, uh, that joined Western Germany, were uh, given um, a quite favorable exchange rate of their old currency to the new Deutsche Mark. So that increased demand quite a lot. The economy starts overheating and the German Central Bank, the Bundesbank, raises the interest rate. Now, however, other countries in the European monetary system did not have a reunification. So demand was not uh, high. So it was an uh, asymmetric shock that hit the German economy as a boom, but not the other economies. So actually their business cycles would have required a lower interest rate. However, um, of course, pressure was mounting due to the interest rate parity for a fixed currency to increase um, uh, the interest rate. The first thing that was done was that the finance ministers of the European monetary system member countries tried to reinforce their commitments to the fixed exchange rate in order to calm down uh, the markets. However, this was not particularly successful and it came to um, massive short selling of particular currencies, particularly the pound and the Italian lira. Uh, and so the central banks uh, intervened in order to stabilize the currency. So they uh, sold uh, foreign uh, reserves and bought their own currency. And that led to a massive loss in their reserves, basically. However, even that did not help. And so interest rates had to be increased in some of these countries, for example, in the United Kingdom by 15%. Uh, then uh, this also didn't stabilize uh, the situation. So one of devaluations uh, in Spain and Italy occurred, capital controls were introduced in Ireland and Spain. And finally, the strict bag or the, the rather strong bag that existed with a, a very small uh, band um, was not sustainable anymore. Finland, Italy and UK left the European monetary system and then in July uh, bands were introduced instead of the fixed uh, bag. So uh, plus minus 15% around the bag were allowed. So in the end the uh, strict uh, system broke down and was replaced by a more flexible system during this crisis. Thank you very much for watching the video and I hope you found it interesting and useful. For more videos on economic content, uh, please visit my channel that you find here to the left. Um, and to the right, you see the next video in the series at the top. And at the bottom, you see uh, the whole lecture in the form of a playlist.